Hi, it's Diderik Gelderman here, speaker, trainer, author of four published books, founder of Business Productivity Academy and Tur Turbocharger Practice. Welcome. You know, over the last five or six years, I've become fascinated with productivity and fascinated with how some of the super achievers in the world manage to do and, and get through the things that they do and get through with so little apparent effort. People like Buffett, Branson, uh, Gates, uh, the late Steve Jobs, the late Stephen Covey, and, and people like that. They seem to be supermen, uh, superheroes in, in their ability to get through stuff. And over the last five years, I've, I've studied what they've done and really concentrated on learning what they've done, how they do it, and how they make it happen for themselves. Now, why have I done that? Because for most of my life, I've been one of these overachieving, um, overdoing type people. But the difference between someone like me and, and possibly even someone like you and those people that I mentioned is that we're doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and running rings around and headless chooks and all those sort of analogies. We're absolutely working 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week and not achieving what these guys are doing or maybe getting close to achieving it, but they're doing it effortlessly and we're putting in all the time and effort and under the sun and, and you know over that period of time, over the last 20 years that I've been doing it, it's worn me out. It's worn me out to a frazzle. So I thought there's got to be a better way. And after studying these guys for, for the five or six years, like I said, yeah, I think I've, uh, well, I know I found a better way and I've condensed it down to some nuts and bolts and some of that I want to share with you here today. So the four things that uh, these guys um, do or, or have summarized things down to uh, are four lines and, and the four lines are vital functions, vital priorities, vital metrics, and then vital transformations. So let's, so you can see the word vital is, is in each of those. And that's a key word. Now I wanna go one step above that. And I just wanna use the word vitals. Now I'd like you to imagine this. You're a, a I don't know you personally, but you're a veterinarian or a, or a veterinary practice nurse or a receptionist or a practice manager. In some way, shape or form, you're in the veterinary industry. Now, as part of that veterinary industry, it's most likely that you've seen an accident walk in the door of your practice. And that may not be grammatically correct, but you know what I mean. There's been a hit by car. Um, a, 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 a GDV, there's been a, a, a very sick, very ill cat, dog, ferret, hamster, horse, cow, whatever, that's either walked into your practice or you've gone to see it. Now, what do you do typically when you see one of these emergency cases? Yeah, you're right. You concentrate on the vitals. Uh, if the animal's got, you know, a big cut up its forearm or a big skin flap hanging loose or whatever it is, or maybe even a bone sticking through the skin somewhere, you ignore that. And correctly so, when you concentrate on the vitals, heart, lungs, color refill, uh, breathing, those sorts of things. Now, the, the owners often panic and they concentrate about you know, the extremity issues, the bone sticking up through the skin or the skin flap off its head or uh, maybe even the eye hanging out if it's, if it's got a prop-tosed eye. Now, to the average client, those things look important, and yes, they are, but they're not vital because if we treat those things first, as you know, and ignore the vitals, the heart, the breathing, the lungs, the color, the refill, um, and whether this animal is going to survive or not. If we ignore those things and, and concentrate on those extremity issues and the patient dies, there's no point worrying about the extremity issues. So you've got to worry about the vital issues. I hope that makes sense to you. And let's look at it from another perspective. If you were in a car accident um, or if someone you know was in a car accident and you went to the hospital with them or the emergency ward or whatever, 
What would you want the doctors in that emergency ward to concentrate on? The extremity issues or the vital issues? Now, I hope I've made my point. Let's now translate that to practice. Now, in practice, we have vital functions, vital priorities, vital metrics, and vital transformations. And yet, most practice owners, practice managers, um, people that run the business concentrate on the extremity issues. They don't concentrate on the vital issues. Now, we think to some degree we concentrate on the vital issues, but we don't. And that's one of the big differences between the Bransons, the Buffets, the Jobs uh, of the world and, and us with respect to running their business. Buffett, Branson, Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, Stephen Covey, all those people, Gates, um, Trump, they all concentrate on the vital issues of their business, not the extremity issues. Now, that's hard to do because the extremity issues are loud. Um, you know, a piece of bone sticking out through the skin or a big skin flap off the head or the flank or a big cut, they look major to the untrained eye. And you and I know they're not as important as the vital issues. Now, the, 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 the extremity issues are the things that are loud, they're chaotic, they're in your face, and they're the things that demand immediate attention. In hit by car cases, human or, or animal or otherwise, and in your practice. And with respect, I'm going to suggest that you're paying a lot of attention to the extremity issues in your practice and very little or a lot less attention to the vital issues because the extremity issues take up your day. Now, to some degree, they're fun as well because when we attend to the extremity issues, we're the white knight riding in on our horse, um, you know, with a superhero that comes and fixes something and, you know, things appear to settle down and things appear to, you know, relax and, and the Fuhrer and the, and the fire engines disappear. But, but really, it's not moving the practice anywhere. It's not moving the needle in the practice. It's simply putting out fires. But it makes us feel good because we've been able to put out some bushfires and, and help some, some team members or clients along. And yeah, there is to some degree room for that and to some degree that needs to be done. But concentrating on the vital issues is much, much, much more important. And when we get the vital issues locked in, locked down, nutted in and under control, a lot less fires uh, need to be managed, a lot le less extremity issues need to be managed. So that's what I want to talk about in this video and, and, and in a couple of videos uh, coming up. Um, and, and by the way, um, just... Uh, a little bit off topic but also on topic if you're in australia and you want to come to a, a workshop in which we spend a whole day on productivity and looking at the vital issues in in your practice uh, i'm having a workshop in sydney on the 20th and 21st of february 2015 this year and the first day is going to be purely and simply concentrating on insane productivity and I've taken all the strategies from from these top guys and gals and put them together in a in a one day format format for you so please come along to that day two we talk about insane practice growth so in day two we'll actually be talking about some specific practice building strategies and most of those are very new I have only presented one of the five topics that's on day two ever anywhere in the world before. So the other, uh, so the six topics on day two, one I've presented before, so the other five topics are all brand new stuff. It's all brand new stuff that I created uh, late 2014, late 2000, early 2015. I've been trialing it for a while with some of my one-on-one -on -one co coaching clients and I know that, they've be, that their practice has grown insanely when they've used these strategies. So day one is insane productivity so that you can apply the strategies from day two. Because if we don't do the ground laying you know, uh, in day one and give you the time to implement the strategies that you learn on day two, you, you would have gone home from a workshop and you know, life would have gotten in the road when you get back and, and three quarters of the stuff wouldn't have been applied. So 
uh, if you want to come along to that, Michelle will put a registration link on, on the video and we'll put one in the email as well so you can um, come along. So that's it, Sydney, 20, 21st of, of February 2015. The first thing I'd like to talk about now is your vital functions. What are your vital functions? You know, you're the, the rainmaker, the head honcho of your practice. Do you know what your vital functions are? And, and you, you should only have two or three vital functions. These are the vital things that you do to running and growing your veterinary practice that no one else in your practice can do because they're your key skill set. So what are your vital functions? Now, let me give you two examples. Now, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Oz or not. Okay, Dr. Oz is a, a physician. He's a cardiac surgeon from the United States. He came to fame on the Oprah Winfrey show and he's now got his own uh, three times Emmy winning uh, TV show. He runs two multi-million dollar non -pro 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 profit organizations. He's written, I think it's half a dozen books and he's uh, authored or co-authored over 400 clinical papers on cardiology, heart disease and, and surgery. As well as that, he's married and um, he's got four kids. And he has a, as I said, this TV show runs on a, on a weekly basis so he's in the tv show uh, a lot uh, in the in the production studio a lot he also still does about 200 cardiac surgeries a year so that's one heck of a lifestyle isn't it that is a very full schedule for anyone so let's talk about uh the veterinary side of this the the cardiac surgery side of this now in his tv show and in his cardiac surgery uh, in the tv show for example he doesn't come in and, and set up the lights or set up the camera or do the sound testing in the in the uh, cardiac uh, scenario he doesn't prep the operating theater he doesn't order clave the kits or wash up the materials he doesn't prepare the patient for surgery now let's be totally 100 percent crystal clear here he doesn't even open the body cavity he doesn't do any of the pre-surgery stuff or the or the uh, the stuff that uh, anybody else can do so when the time is right during the surgery he walks in does the thing that only he can do to the heart you know the body cavity is opening all the pre-surgery stuff's been done all the uh, early surgery's been done so he walks in he does what he needs to do and then he walks out so that's how he can do that because his vital functions are only that half an hour in that total, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten hour surgery. Um, that is the only thing that he can do, or that he can do that no one else can, and that's all he does. Now, do you do that in, in your practice? Do you just do your vital functions? Or are you doing a, a, a bit of everything all over the place? Let me talk about a guy called Joel Osteen. Now, Joel Osteen can be called a tele-evangelist. If you haven't seen his show, uh, it's 22 minutes. It's every Sunday. I'd suggest you have a look at it. Now, I'm not a religious person, so I'm not promoting religion or anything else. And now, whether you like tele-evangelists or not, the thing is, this tele-evangelist business is a multi-million dollar business. Now, Joel is what I would think the best keynote speaker on the planet. Why is that? Because he produces a, a new 22 minute segment every week, 52 weeks a year. Now, I saw a couple of interviews with Joel and he says initially when his father died and he took over the, the speaking business or the tele-evangelist business, whatever you want to call it, he was doing weddings, funerals, um, marriages, you know, the, the whole thing. He would do anything that was necessary. He would set up the lights uh, uh, for, for the presentation on the Sunday. He would, you know, do the advertising, do the bumpers on the front and the back of the um, TV slots. That whole, he did everything. And the business was very, 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 very poor. It was limited by how much time he had and what he could spend time and attention on. He had a wake up call and he thought, you know, this business is floundering. And he said, what is it that makes the most difference 
to this business? Where do I get the most leverage? And he thought, okay, it's that 22 minutes that I do on Sunday. So he said, okay, I'm going to get rid of all the other tasks in this business. And all I'm going to do is that 22 minutes on Sunday. So let me give you his schedule. On Wednesday, he researches everything that he needs to do for the uh, presentation on Sunday. On Thursday, he writes it out word for word. On Friday, he practices it. Uh, so, and he practices it all day so that he can uh, deliver it word for word. On Saturday, he gives two trial sessions in front of private audiences in the presentation center. And it's all he does on the Saturday. On Sunday, lights, camera, action, and he is just perfect. On Monday, he is off. He has that day for R&R &R to, to, to unwind and, and recover. And on Tuesday, he does his leadership stuff. He does any meetings that he needs to do, interviews that he needs to do. So since he's developed that pattern of behavior or, or that diary pattern, whatever you want to call it, his business has gone stratospheric because that 22 minutes on Sunday is perfect every single time and it is the biggest impact that he can have on driving his business so what are your three key functions now joel's got it down to one key function okay one key function that's speech what are your three functions your three key functions in your business now what i'm going to do is challenge you so what I'd suggest you do is write down your three key functions. What are the three things that you should only be doing to drive your veterinary business? Now, my challenge is this. Grab a stopwatch. I can't, you know, I'm not wearing a watch and I don't have a stopwatch around my neck, but you know what a stopwatch is. So I'd suggest you get a stopwatch and hang it around your neck or, or have one of these fancy watches on your arm that, that has the, the, the time, you know, button that you can uh, record time on. And then when you sit down or stand up or walk around and, and when you're doing your vital functions, click that stopwatch to start. And then when you finish doing that vital function, click it to stop. And you've got three vital functions. I would suggest that each day for the next week, you time specifically how much time you spend doing your key vital functions. Now, I'm going to suggest that you're going to get shocked at how little time you actually spend on your key vital functions. When you add up that time every day for a week, if you spend 30 days on those key vital functions on a daily basis, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. Anyway, let me know. Um, they did that study, if you like, with the Fortune 500 uh, CEOs a couple of years ago, and the Fortune 500 CEOs spent 28 minutes a day, 28 minutes a day on the key vital functions that drove their Fortune 500 companies. Now, these are supposedly the best 500 managers on the planet, right? And they only spend 27 minutes a day. So that's the concept of vital functions. I now want to talk about the concept of vital priorities. Vital functions are the big overarching uh, th things that we just talked about. Vital priorities are your three priorities that drive you to, the, to, to achieving those vital functions. Now, I'm not gonna to talk too much about it today because we've already been going for about 25 minutes and I'll finish off on this topic uh, in the next couple of videos. But I'm gonna suggest that you have three vital priorities or you could call it goals, three vital goals. Now, what I'm gonna suggest you, I'm gonna give you the Buffett method, method of goal setting or the Buffett method of prioritization. So you write down all your goals, all the goals that you've got. Write down every single solitary goal. Boom, 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 boom. Goal, 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 goal. Priority, priority, priority. Whatever you want. Goal, goals and priorities. Write them down. Okay? Easy. You can do that. We can all do that. Now, the second thing is number the top three. So pick out the top three and put one, two, and three next to them. Or star them. Or you can, if you can't decide which is one, two, or three in order, just star them. So pick out the top three. Now, you can do that. Now, this is where Buffett differs. This is the Buffett method. Write down three, take all the others and throw them out. 
and you're saying, Dick, Dick, hang on, I, I can't do that. I, 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 I want to have these others here so I can show them a little bit of love occasionally. If I'm bored of these top three, I can do something else. I can get to work on them. No, you can't. That's why Buffett's Buffett. That's why Richard Branson is Richard Branson. They all use that method. Top three, throw out the rest. So I'm going to leave it at this for today. And that's going to be your challenge, the stopwatch test, getting your three priorities or your three goals and throwing out the rest. When you work on your three vital functions using the stopwatch, when you work on your three vital priorities or goals and nothing else gets in the road, then you're starting to really work on your business. So that's the challenge. We'll catch up in another video soon and you can let me know how you've gone. By the way, please come to that February workshop, 21, 20, 2021 February, 2015 in Sydney, and we'll do this in a lot more detail. You'll get a lot more um, uh, insight into the, the strategies from these guys. So come along, join me there. It's limited because it'll be a hands-on workshop, okay? It's 349. It's peanuts for the, uh, for the outcome that you're going to get. Day one, insane productivity. Day two, insane practice growth. See you there, or I'll see you on the next video. Bye.